We don't have a ton of news, but we do have some news, so let's get to the news. Good evening, Mr. 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 Office, South and Urban. All the tips and clippers see. Let's go to press flight. First thing up in game news is a Kickstarter. Four days to go now, so when you listen to this, you may only have a day or two more to go on it. It is a game called Dark Ages by Adam Kuspiskini and Andre Novak. Uh, it has kicked. It's at about $150,000. This is a game that Heavy Cardboard has done a sponsored uh, teach and playthrough, and uh, it looks kind of epic. It, it's sort of, in, it's got a little bit of Euro feel, but a lot of it is big old Ameritrash, tons and tons of pieces, and the entire game has an Eastern half and a Western half, the Western Europe and the Central Europe. You're essentially playing Charlemagne or you're playing the Holy Roman Empire. And uh, it takes place during the Dark Ages. Massive amount of, uh, uh, of miniatures. They are stunning, stunning miniatures. I, I can't believe how beautiful they are. Um, they show some examples of them painted. And if you can get a, a good person to, to paint them or a few yourself, I, I'm horrible at that, that sort of thing. But it looks really, really amazing. Evidently, the miniatures are, uh, the commanders are 40 millimeters. The units are 20 millimeters, which I, I think is a, a fairly good size. Looks interesting. If, if you are into mini games, I am not particularly. It looks like 88 bucks, not counting shipping, will get you one of the two parts of the game. Basically, each one is a complete standalone game. But you can play a massive, massive game if you have both of them, which, of course, is going to cost you 162 bucks at the, at the starting level. Um, As someone who plays uh, more miniature games than you, I I'm going to go ahead and say I'm not impressed by these miniatures. Um, in really? comparison to uh, Tainted Grail or Nemesis or even Simon games, these look pretty, pretty basic to me. Just uh, not to be a contrarian, but no, these aren't these aren't uh, blowing my socks off. You're not a contrarian. This is not my field of expertise. I mean, uh, you know yeah. far more than I these do. These are about pretty this. Uh, pretty standard in my opinion. Nothing nothing to write home about here. Maybe the game is amazing. I also don't really care about miniatures. If the game is good, I'll play with I'll play anything. But um, yeah, th these are uh, pretty basic. Yeah. Right. Also, it's a, sort of a weird time to be backing Kickstarter because normally you have to add three to six months onto your timing for thinking of when you're actually going to get the game. But in this reality you live in right now, oh, yeah, I don't, who knows? I don't even. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. 2022. Who knows anything? Yeah. I mean, add a year. I don't know. Even if everything goes well, all the factories are going to be so behind on everything else that you know. I don't know. But is that I feel I feel bad for anybody who. Uh, had a Kickstarter up during this. I'm, I'm sure we won't see any new ones starting for a while. Is is that that unusual though for for Kickstarter? How long from package to plate did it take you to get Eclipse Second Dawn? Uh, two years, I think. But I mean, you, now you've got to add on. You know, you got to add on more than normal. Is all I'm saying. Yeah, fair but enough. yeah, it'll be a while. Fair enough. Uh, Donald Vacar uh, Vaccarino, who uh, did, of course the amazing Dominion, did another game that I didn't really like, but tons of people loved, called Kingdom Builder. Turns out he's coming out with a standalone uh, sequel to it called Winter Kingdom. Um, it's got seven map tiles that uh, arrange into a playing area, so, it, uh, so the playing area can change every time. Basically, it looks very similar to Kingdom Builder with, uh, with some new bits and bobs and, and new ways that uh, the, the terrains interact. Matt, did you ever play Kingdom Builder? I did. I enjoyed it. I never bought it, but actually I bought it as a gift for somebody else. And when we were on vacation, we played it a lot. And I really enjoyed it. Um, not enough to buy it for myself when I got home, but I, I, I actually enjoyed it. And if somebody were to bring it out, I would happily play it again. Yeah, to me, it just felt a little blandly abstract to me at the end of the day. Oh, no, yeah, it is, it is an abstract, absolutely. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, interesting news in the world of gaming conventions. When I first read this, I got very mad, and then the more I read, the more interesting it became to me. Um, the Origins Game Fair 2020 currently is still going to take place June 17th to 21st. Yeah, it, no, it's not. It's I, just not. Oh, I know it's not. But the reason that they haven't canceled it, to me, is fascinating. I, I had no idea about this. Um, but uh, 
BGG uh, interviewed uh, Eric Martin interviewed a uh, Avenel Wing who runs uh, Double Exposure Incorporated. They run a lot of really great uh, gaming conventions like Dexcon in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And she said, yeah, I totally understand what this is. What it is 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 if a gaming convention tries to cancel all of their creditors, the hotels, the you know everyone, all their vendors, everybody that they have dealt with, they cannot get their money back until th- there's always a force majeure part of the contract which says we're, we can only give you your money back if it is something that is that it is canceled because it's a state of emergency it's canceled mm. because of this and the other thing and as of yet nothing in june has been written off by federal yeah. federal or state officials so they so they would lose tons and tons of money if they don't wait until the proper you know x's have been crossed and and eyes have been dotted um which is uh, which which is sad it's 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 uh i get it i get it now i'm like well okay and by putting this article out and by explaining this kind of it's kind of a wink and a nod saying officially we can't say we're going to cancel this but don't count on coming to origins Uh, and the moment we're the moment we can cancel it without having to uh to incur great cost we will so yeah okay Right. Well, I don't blame them. No, no, I don't. I, I don't blame them. I, 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 I frankly wish that the, the, the listen, I understand hotels are hurting bad right now. They are being crushed. And so they're trying to hang on to every last little, little dime of money that's been mm-hmm. given to them ahead of time. I, I get that too. But come on, everybody knows that, that uh, we're not having a, a, a massive, you know, tens of thousands of people convention in June. It's just not going to happen right now. Yeah, definitely not. On happier news, Dig Your Way Out is a game that uh, is about, about to come out. It's a 2019 release, but I don't think that it has been uh, been out here yet. One of those games that uh, you know I'm digging around on the geek, and I just d- d- discover and take a look at, and I kind of love it. Basically, it is a uh, we're playing inmates trying to escape from prison, and you want to be the first one to dig your hole, right? You're gonna you, you start off with a like a plastic spoon that you can start digging with, and little by little you can do things like search for to get more ingre- to, to get more things. You can move, you can join a gang, and if you can successfully join a gang, you know you need to have things to give to the gang to be a part of the gang. You need the you know the right color bandanas and all sorts of stuff like that. And if you do you get buffs because you're in that gang, right? You get the uh, certain things that you don't have to uh, do and all that sort of stuff. You can extort an inmate. You can use a, a shovel or a pick or a spoon as a weapon. Uh, I'm a sucker for a good theme. I, I don't know if, uh, for the life of me if this is going to be a good playing game, but I love the theme and the idea of it. No, that, that theme does sound awesome, and the artwork looks really cool, too. It reminds me a little bit of... Um, all of the uh, Paladins of the West Kingdom and North Kingdom games. Maybe it is the same artist. I'll have to look. It kind of does look a little bit like that, doesn't it? Oh, uh, it, is, it, is, it is the same artist. There you go. Uh, Mahaj, Mahajo Dimitri, Dimitrievsky. Dimitrievsky. Uh, and the designer, You're a better man than I for trying it. Uh, you know, we've got to try. And uh, David Simda, Simide uh, is the designer. I apologize. I'm probably mangling these, but somebody made a good point. They wrote, they wrote us a note and said, we understand that it's hard to pronounce foreign names, but if you just stop pronouncing names that are foreign, then the only people you're giving recognition to are people with names like you. And I'm like, wow, that's a really good point. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Got to try it every time. Um, next up, Kiesling and Kramer. Michael Kiesling, Wolfgang Kramer, some of my favorite designers in the world. Wolfgang Kramer, all the way back to El Grande. Kiesling and Kramer did many, many designs together. The, the famous Tikal and Mexica and that whole series, the Mask series that was called. Uh, Kiesling recently, Azul. They have a game t- together coming out in uh, supposedly this year called Paris. Uh, it's going to be exploring Paris in the 19th century. It's a typical medium weight game. These guys do a lot of games with um, po- sort of 
you can get points through many different ways. A lot of it in, involves tile lays and uh, laying tiles that require certain adjacencies and uh, are pe penalized by other adjacencies. Look, it doesn't sound like anything new to you, but if you look at the art, if you, uh, you remember the game Brussels, right, Matt? Uh, the art of the uh, of a lot of the cards reminds me a lot of Brussels. There's a real uh, Bella Polk, uh Beaux Arts kind of feel to some of it. I know I used two completely different terms; only one of them is correct, and I don't know which one it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, Brussels is one of my favorite art uh, art packages in the game. I will tell you who did it because he has done Alexandre Roche, who has done a million things like Twa and Carson City and Brussels, and probably my my very favorite artist. He's actually one of the only artists who I will buy a game just because he did the art on it. That's how much I love his style. Well, you're forgetting about my Irishman, you know, Tool, Mr. O'Toole. Well, sure. Finest, sure. finest sure. in the land. If you, if you bought every game that Ian O'Toole did the artwork to, you would just buy every game. <laughs> he is fairly ubiquitous, isn't he? Um, anyway, uh, Paris should be coming out uh, later this year. Look, I know when you hear the words, you know, point salad, tile laying, tiles need to be near this but not near that. It sounds very rote. It sounds like a lot of other games. I'll just tell you that Kiesling and Kramer are some of the originators of a lot of these mechanisms. They they do it. They tend to do it better than than everybody else. So when it comes around, when you uh, have a chance to check it out, I recommend that you do. I'm quite excited for it. There is nothing you said there that is a deterrent to me. Only an attractor. I am super in for all of it. Good, 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 good. I don't know. When we were talking about uh, video game adaptations, did we mention last week that Wingspan is coming to Nintendo Switch? I don't think so, no. But I, I did see that piece as well, and I think that is a uh, a great ad a great place for it. There's a lot of great Switch games, uh, board games on Switch. You discussed some of them last week, but Wingspan, I mean, Wingspan just coming to anything other than Tabletop Simulator would be fantastic. Right? I totally agree. I totally agree. I, I mean, I think that that is, you know, it continues to be one of those games that thematically it's just so fresh, so interesting, so rewarding. And the, the the rules are easy enough to understand, and yet the gameplay is not super super simple. It's got just enough complexity. It's got a little little meat on the bones, and, and I, I hope more people. I hope people sitting at home uh, during during this time uh, get out their switches and start checking this stuff out because it's really really cool. Well, it's not out yet, right? It's just heading there. Hopefully, sometime this year. Yes. Well, I'm hoping that oh, anticipated for spring. It says. That's yeah, right. There you go. But no formal date has been announced. No, but there are a lot of things that are uh, that are rushing forward, right? There are movies that are, are coming out pretty much directly on Disney Plus and so on and so forth. Um, yeah. Well, it depends how close it was to being finished. If it was not close to being finished, then it may not get finished until people can come back to work. But we'll see. Fair enough. Fair enough. And last but not least, a blow to all of our fans out there that were looking for <laughs> that were looking for the uh, what what is the what are the initials? What are the initials matter? Oh, uh, uh, DA was uh, that a district I, attorney? Uh, IDA. No, Something no, ADA, ADA, right? ADA, because it's the ADA. American Attorney American Dental Attorney. Association. Whenever I hear it, it's the American, it's the game of the, um, the official game of the American Dental Association. ADA, Assistant District Attorney, the game that uh, Dimitri begged Trey to start making, and Trey is making it. Um, we were pointing out that there are so few uh, games about lawyers of the legal system. Coming out in 2021, lawyer up. <laughs> Samuel Bailey and Mike Nade are going to be making this game. It is a two-player... It's on Kickstarter right now. That's started right. four days ago. Yes, it did. Two-player asymmetrical card game where they take opposing attorneys uh, against each other in a court case. It is a game of arguments, influence, and strategies. Looking at it on uh, on Kickstarter, I don't know. I mean, it looks fine. It looks like a, 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 a card-based game. There are a lot of... Symbols on the sides of the cards, which indicate you're you're doing a little bit of set collection. It, it doesn't look all that different than Magic the Gathering for courtrooms, right? Wouldn't you say? Yeah. From from what I gather, what Trey is doing, this has nothing to do with him, other than uh, than than a slight theme uh, similarity. But yeah, th this is a two player, sixty minute card game. 
uh, and it sounds interesting. And, you know, it, this is obviously a cool theme. And we hope that uh, there are lots of cool lawyer games, but we but we trust that trays will be singular. Yes, except first to market, man. First to market, they're gonna get. Yeah, but a two player a two player <laughs> game is a very different market than you know a medium to heavyweight euro. I, I'm just speaking out of my butt. I'm not sure exactly what Trey's designing, but I, I would assume it's at least a medium weight euro that plays for to more than two players. Genius, genius. All right, that's all we got for the news. Hey, if you enjoyed that video, you very well might enjoy the other videos you now see being suggested to you on screen. Also, we'd greatly appreciate it if you could like, share, or subscribe to our Game Brain channel. Thanks so much.